Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. I'm Chris Bailey with CG Cookie and today we're gonna to be making the ultimate water slide using geometry nodes. Let's do it. Now, if you enjoy the concepts of this video, check out cgcookie.com with the assemble course, which Jonathan Lampel's put together recently. It's a really detailed, amazing dive into geometry nodes, using it to create a full theme park with Ferris wheel that's adjustable and procedural along with a uh, roller coaster that you can actually move and adjust dynamically while the cars follow the track. It's a really great tutorial series. I highly recommend it. So if you enjoy this, go check that out. Now, the first thing we need to do is create a spline object. So let's create a spline. I'm going to delete everything that's already in my scene. So I'll just shift select the things in my scene and hit X to delete. And I'm gonna go Shift A to create a new object with the Add menu. And right here under Curve, we're just gonna click Bezier. Now Bezier is a kind of curve that allows you to adjust handles to create nice little arcs and curves. So if you hit Tab to go into Edit Mode, you can see I've got these points and they have these handles, which are basically two additional points that uh, determine the shape of the curve. If you hit S to scale, you can adjust the size of these and you can rotate them in any direction. It's really cool what you can do with splines. So we're gonna be putting um, geometry nodes onto the spline so that geometry nodes can build a water slide on top of it following the path of the spline. And that's how we're gonna pull this off. Okay, so with this object, let's drag our window up and we're gonna create the Geometry Nodes window editor. So we're gonna come over here to the little, uh, the Panels tab, and we're gonna to switch to the Geometry Node editor. Now, there's no Geometry Nodes on this object at first, but if you look over here on the Property tabs for the object, if we click on the wrench, we've got the modifiers, and Geometry Nodes is actually a modifier. So when I click New to create a new system, it will create it automatically on the object that is selected. And you'll see a modifier appear here for geometry nodes, or I could add a modifier directly to this object. And you can see one of the modifiers here is called geometry nodes. We could add it on. And now we have a similar dialog to this and I can press new here to create a new system or new here to create a new system as well. So both these are gonna assign a new geometry node system to this object. So let's do it over here. I click new, automatically names it geometry nodes and you can see it pops up here. But we can call this whatever we want. So we call this water slide. Now watch, I've renamed it here but it's gonna update right here. So you can see these are connected. And this drop down will show you a list of all the geometry nodes systems that you've built in your scene or you have in your scene, and you can assign them with these drop downs. So just bear in mind that the window, you know, it, whatever it is selected, it'll show you um, what's on it. So if I don't have a geometry nodes on an object, so if I create a cube over here, select the cube, you can see everything disappears here because there is no geometry nodes on this object, but this one does. So when I click it, it appears. So this is kind of an expanded view of whatever is on the modifier stack for that object. So with this object selected, let's get started making some geometry nodes. Now, what we want to do is give this curve some depth. So we want to make a water slide. We know it's going to need a um, like a tubular shape that's going to follow from the top all the way down to the bottom. And then we're going to need to create some posts to support it as well as some structure. So let's, uh, let's get the tube working first to figure that out. So in geometry nodes, you have a group input and a group output, and then this green pipe that connects the two. And the, what this is, is, is taking the object that it's assigned to, and it's piping it in here on the group input. So this curve comes in here, and then we're passing it along to the output, and then it's displaying uh, whatever the output receives. So in this case, the curve, unchanged, unaffected, nothing's happening. It's just going in, going out, and that's all we've got. Now. Let's turn this curve into mesh and put a, uh, a bit of a lofted circle across it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A to create a new node. Now you can create nodes as well from the Add menu here, um, or Shift A is just the hotkey to get this little menu wherever your mouse cursor is, which is quite helpful. And we're gonna grab a curve um, primitive circle, curve circle. This will create a circle. Now we don't see anything yet because there's nothing, you know, this isn't plugged in anywhere. If I plug this here, it's gonna remove the curve that was coming in from the input, which is still here at the input, but it's not being passed through anymore. And now the curved circle is being passed through so we can see it. So you can change the resolution and the radius. So we're just gonna bring that radius down a little bit and the resolution, we can keep that maybe right about there, 43, something like that. Now we're gonna use a special node called the um, curve to mesh node. Now the curve to mesh node takes a curve, 
turns it into mesh, but it gives you a couple of cool little features. One of them is this thing called profile curve. So first thing it's asking for is the curve. So this is the path that we want a profile curve to follow. So what does that mean? Basically, it's going to take the spline and then it's going to take this curved circle. If we plug it into the, uh, the profile curve, I'll plug this into the curve. And what it's going to do is take that circle and it's going to like slide it along the shape of this curve. And wherever it goes, it's going to create mesh. Does that make sense? So we're going to take this mesh output and plug it into the output. It will remove the original spline and show us what we got. So now you can see it's taking that circle shape. I could change the radius. It will affect how this, um, how the size of this pipe. I'm holding down shift while I drag and that slows down my, my, um, the amount that it changes. It moves a bit intense when you, uh, don't hold that shift. So there we go. We've got a tube. Now, if I go into edit mode, so hit tab, you can see I'm back to what we originally had, which is the, the structure of that spline. But now we're seeing it with all the geometry nodes effects on top. So I can adjust the original spline here and it will adjust the system that we have here by lofting that circle across this new curve as we adjust it. So let's go ahead and get something that looks sort of like a water slide. So I can just bring this up here maybe and I'll come here and rotate this one, bring this down, bring it forward, maybe scale it, maybe rotate it on the Z a little bit. This one here, I might scale this up a little bit. So it's not too much of a drop. Uh, we could also hit E to extrude and then rotate, make a bit of like a, like a loop. So I've got my water slide, looks fun. I'd go down that, yeah. Okay, so next thing we wanna have are some brackets. Let's have some brackets that kind of delineate the different pipe sections. Now, what I'm thinking for this is having some raised areas that kind of stick out along the sides. So I'm gonna create an object that I can instance across the surface of this new geometry object that we're creating in geometry nodes. So what is instancing? Instancing is when you take an object, like a mesh object or a curve or something, and then Blender, copies it, but it's still the same object. It's sort of like having a reflection of that object. You don't have two objects, you just have one, but you can see it twice. And an instance is where you can see this one object in a lot of different places. It sort of saves memory and allows, render, uh, allows Blender to render things a bit quicker because it's only have to think about one object and then it just takes that one object and creates all these different, you know, uh, visual representations of it everywhere. So. Let's uh, let's create the little bracket object and then we'll bring it into our geometry nodes system. So I'm gonna go shift A and I'm gonna create a mesh circle and we'll just hit full stop on my keyboard to focus on it. And then I'm gonna go into edit mode with tab. Let's hit B to box select and let's select these six vertices, right? So right through here. Now I'm gonna hit E to extrude and then S to scale and X to lock it on the X and scale out. And because I'm set to uh, my pivot point is the median point of all the selected objects, it means it's going to put the pivot of this scale operation right here in the middle. So these guys are just going to scale away from that point. So I can scale them up, scale them down a little bit. I just want it to kind of go out a little bit. Now what I want to do is select this one vertex that's on the inside and hit X and delete and then pick vertices there. Um, and that's going to get rid of that. So now I've got this sort of outline that I want. It's got this sort of, you know, boxy bracket with the curve. All right, now I'm going to hit A to select all and then E to extrude and Z to lock it on the Z. And I'll just bring it up a little bit, hit E and S to scale and just bring it in. And then I'm going to hold down Alt and click the bottom row of edges. And Alt is a way of selecting a ring of edges. So every edge that's connected will be selected when holding down Alt. So hold down Alt, click one, it'll select all of them. And then E again, and S to scale. And just bring that in a little bit. I think I'll right click. Um, actually, we'll just do auto smooth. All right, cool. Now we're gonna use this object on our slide. So this circle, I'm just gonna rename it bracket and I'll rename my curve slide just so it's really clear. I'm gonna click, click my slide and I wanna drag bracket in to my geometry node system. So I'm gonna come up here and click and drag and drop it. And now I've got this object info node with bracket selected as the object. You could click this and you get a drop down menu of all the objects in your scene, but it's kind of just a faster way of doing it, sets it up for us. So what we wanna do now is we wanna take this and make 
copies of it all along the surface of this curve. But we got to do a few things to get that to happen, to have it follow that curve. So first thing we need to do is in geometry nodes, when you want to instance an object across a bunch of things or in a bunch of places, you need to work with something called points. Now points are just positions in space. Um, that's pretty much it. It's just like a point in space. It doesn't have any anything that renders to it. There's no geometry to it. There's no nothing. It's just a point. You do that. You manipulate those points to get them in the right spots. And then we can tell Blender instance this object where all these points are. And Blender will do that thing where it takes it and it just puts it everywhere without only having to think about the one, one thing to render. So let's do that. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look for instance. It's a great way to find stuff, by the way, is the Shift A menu at the top. If you just click search, you can type in anything and it'll show you all the suggestions that match what you're typing. So I'm going to select instance and or no, sorry, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type in points. I'm going to use the curved points node and I'm going to plug in. Now, what we're going to have to do, this is important. So we've used this node to convert a curve, the original curve, into mesh. So from this point, it's mesh. So it's not not a curve. So what we want to do is this, this particular node requires a curve input. So what we need to do is plug the original curve into this for this to work. So I'm going to take the original curve and plug it into the curve endpoint. And let's just ignore this whole bit for now. And let's just look at what this gives us. So I'm going to plug that in and you can see we get these points. That's what points look like. They're kind of these diamond shapes. Um, these are quite large because um, we're working on kind of a small scale, I think, but um, so we can decide how many we want with the count button. We'll just leave it at 10 for now. And now what we're going to do is say, okay, wherever these points are, we want to instance one of these brackets. So I can come to here, type in search and grab the instance on points node. Now, if you don't remember all these, just rewatch this video. You'll begin to memorize these notes because you use these same nodes over and over again for all these operations. So instance on points is something you'll use pretty much every time you use geometry nodes. So this feels a bit overwhelming right now. Don't worry, you're just in that learning phase where you're trying to you know, onboard all these new terms and nodes and things to begin to utilize. But the more you practice this, you'll recognize that you're gonna be using the same ones over and over again, and that really helps a lot. So I'm just gonna click there to drop this into the pipe. And now everything disappears, right? Um, because we haven't told Blender what to instance on these points. So it's instancing nothing on the points. So it's doing, you know, what we're telling it to do, but you know, it's not what we want. So we're gonna take the object that we brought in. So we'll take this geometry and we're gonna plug it into the instance. And now, ba -ba, you can see we have a bracket at every point. Now I can increase the count and you can see we get more and more of these guys. You can create some cool effects with this stuff. It's pretty neat. And you can see, of course, these points are being instanced along that original curve. So again, if we go into edit mode, we can adjust these curve points and it's going to adjust the geometry node system underneath. So very cool. Okay, now these guys aren't pointing in the right direction and they're a bit too big. So I'm gonna click and drag down to select all those um, scale inputs. And I'm gonna hold down shift to slow down the numbers. And I'm just gonna drag to the left a bit and just bring the scale down a touch. Um, we'll check this some more in a minute once we see it with the, uh, the tube itself. Okay, so now we need to rotate them. Now we need to rotate them in a special way. We can't just like universally rotate them like this, right? Because we actually want them to rotate along the angle of the curve as it bends and twists. So we'll keep this all at zero and we'll use a special node for that because it's gonna calculate it at every point, you know, which way should we be facing. So. We get some nice little outputs, right? So curve to points gives us tangent, normal, and rotation. This is basically telling us like, what is the angle of the curve at this moment, at this point? So we can use this to create some rotation. We can plug this in, and that is going to rotate every instanced object so that it matches the rotation of the curve at that particular point. So wherever our point is, each one of these things, it looks at how's the curve rotated, how's it pointing, and it's outputting this at the rotation value. And we can use that when we instance. And you can see this is one node, but it's affecting a lot of objects. This has got a dotted line here. Dotted lines in geometry nodes means that geometry nodes is looping through all of the all of the instances, or all the objects that are required for this operation. So we've got 19. 
they get 20, 20 objects, 20 points. So it's going to loop through each point and instance an object, set the rotation, and then it'll move to the next point. It looks at what the rotation of this point. And what do we want to instance? This. So we instance it, it rotates it, it adjusts the scale, moves to the next point, and it cycles through bit by bit. You can see that this isn't a dotted line, and that's because there's no need to loop through this. This one is going to be the same for all of them. So it just does it once. Likewise, the points only come through once. It's just the rotation that it has to loop through. So it'll do that for each point. Once it's done, it moves on to whatever's next in the node system. And what's next? Well, let's combine this with our original two. To do that, we want to use a join geometry node. So we'll just drop that there. Now let's grab our original tube and plug it in there. Now you can see they are together. Leave edit mode. And I'm going to adjust the scale of these guys a bit more. So I'll come over here and hold down shift. And I'll just scale them down so that they start to fit within the space of the, the tube. Now I kind of like the shape. I'm thinking it'd be cool if the tube kind of followed this shape too. So what if we lofted the curve instead of just a curved circle, what if we lofted it with a shape that was like this? So it kind of matched the bracket. Let's see what that looks like. Um, first, I need to actually make something that's gonna work for that. So I'm gonna go back into mo edit mode on our, our bracket and I will alt click one of these outer edges here. And what I can do is shift D to duplicate. And by duplicating, you can see I've got just those vertices. And I wanna use this right here. So I don't want it to be inside this mesh object, so I'm gonna separate this out. I'm gonna hit P for that, and I'm gonna separate by selection. If you can't remember the hotkey, you can always hit F3 and type in separate. And you can see here it says mesh separate by selection, P is the hotkey. So let's separate it, P separate, by selection. So now this has become a new object. If I leave edit mode, I can select this new bracket and I can call this my law for slide. Let's center it up. Our origin is over here. So you see if I rotate, it rotates from that point. I'm going to put it in the middle of this object. So I'm going to go object, set origin, origin to geometry. So let's take this law slide and bring it in. Now it's a geometry object and we want to use it as the profile curve for our curve to mesh. And that's a bit of a problem because this needs a curve, right? But this is geometry, it's not a curve. That's all right, let's convert it. So we're gonna be here and type in mesh to curve. And there it is, a mesh to curve node. Take the geometry, plug it in. Now it's a curve, so I can use it. Plug that in and bam, there we go. Now it's a bit too big, so I need to, size, I need to scale it down a bit. So I'm gonna come over here and grab a transform geometry node, drop it here, now I can adjust the scale. Now the rotation looks a bit off. I kind of want to bring this around a little bit. So if I rotate Z, looks like is the right one. I can rotate it around. Just duplicate this transform and plug this in and then set the scale back to one. That way all of the scale and rotation is managed right in there. Might bring the scale up a little bit. These guys. And I think I want to harden up this edge a little bit. So what I can do is I can come here and grab a subdivide subdivision service and I can plug it in. Let's see here. And that will add a little bit more geometry. Now I don't want to have to see these guys just sitting around in my scene. So I'm going to come over here to scene collection and click the little add collection button and I'll double click this and I'll call um, these slide components and I'm going to grab the bracket and the loft and drag it in. I'll leave the slide here, but what I can do now is I can untick it and that's gonna hide that collection from my scene. So I don't see it anymore, but it's still visible to geometry nodes. So geometry nodes can still use it. Okay, the last thing I wanna do is create some posts for this. So let's uh, create a post where we have a bracket. So each time we have a bracket, we're gonna instance a post. All right, so because we wanna put a post wherever we've got one of these brackets, we need to use the same instance on points. We can just reuse this node, but just you know instance something new. So let's shift E to duplicate. We can keep it all the same and we can grab the points output and bring it up here. Now let's use uh, maybe, I don't know, a cylinder. That probably makes sense. So let's go shift A, type in cylinder. We get this mesh cylinder and I'll plug this in as the instance. Now let's just focus on this for a second. Plug it into here. And there we go, we've got all these cylinders. So let's make them really tall so that they cut right through the ground. 
So I'll come here and we're going to go for the depth and I'll just turn that right up. I'll turn the radius down. So they're just these thin, thin poles. And now let's see what that looks like when we combine it with our geometry node system. So we can use the same join node. Just plug it in here. Okay, so you can see we have a problem. It's intersecting our pipe completely, right? And that's because the origin of the cylinder is right in the middle of the cylinder. So when I make my depth 11.2, it's making it you know, tall and low, like it's going out from that center point. But we don't want it to do that. We want to kind of adjust it from the top and just move it down, right? So let's transform it. Let's move it before it's instanced at all these points. So we can change how this how this works. So I'm going to come over here and type in transform, drop this here. And you can see we're using the same nodes kind of over and over again. You can get used to manipulating stuff in geometry nodes this way. So I'm going to drag down on the negative. You can see it's just sliding them all down. And again, think about it. It's, it's adjusting the way the object is first, and then it's instance again. That's why it's you know working across all the objects. So there we go. That looks pretty good. Nice. Now we'll need to just adjust a few little things like just moving these pipe segments so they don't intersect with the supports. Now in Jonathan's course, if you go head over to CG Cookie, he actually talks through a whole system about how to detect when it's intersecting another object with the roller coaster track. So his the pillars automatically disappear if they intersect um, any of the track, which is a really cool, really cool idea. Neat trick. Again, head over to CG Cookie com to check that out. Last thing we need is some materials. We need to make this, you know, pop look nice. So I'm going to come over here now with geometry nodes. You can't assign materials to the geometry nodes objects directly. Like if I come over here to my material tab, click new and like make this red and switch to rendered view and turn off scene world. So we can use a built in HDRI. Um, you can see it's not red, right? So we have to set the materials in geometry nodes itself. So we need to use the set material node. So let's think about what materials we want. This is the pipes, the, um, sorry, the, the posts. So let's drop one for that. And then we've got the uh, brackets and the tube. So with the brackets and the tube, I'll set this to material one. That way we got uh, this bright red um, tube. And then I'll come over here and we'll create a new material. So I'll click plus to create a new material slot and click new. It doesn't matter if they live on this, this object or another object, as long as they're in the scene, you can access them with this, uh, with the drop down that you have here, but um, I'll just keep them on this. So I've got something. And um, for this one, I'm going to make it kind of a darkish gray, maybe make it metallic, turn metallic up and I will grab that material for the posts. There we go. Looks good. All right. So I've got several cool water slides, but I want to have different colors on them. So one thing you can do that's really cool in geometry nodes is you can kind of elevate any node so that you can adjust it uh, on each individual system. So let me <laughs> explain what that looks like. So if I go to the range, you can see the geometry nodes modifier is just here. And if I come over here, you can see I have this little gray dot under the group input. This is basically I can make this any input I want. So I can bring anything in from outside and then change it for each of these systems. So um, if I use this as a material slot, so if I come over here and drag that to here and this to here, this will allow me to see here a new input called material and I can select any material I want and it's going to adjust it. But it's cool is because it's only going to adjust it on the particular object that I have selected. So I can make a few more materials. Let's make uh, like another one. Actually, let's take this one and let's click new and I'll make another one that's like a blue and then maybe one more that's a green. That maybe something but like that a bit more teal. And then I'll come over here and I'll select another slide and then I can grab one of these. You can see I can easily now just swap out the materials. Make one more so they each have their own. You can see the materials are living on different objects. Like this one's got just these two. This one's got all four. It doesn't really matter. As long as they live in the scene, you can apply it in geometry units. This has to live somewhere.
there you go. We have made the ultimate water slide. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and learned a lot of good things about geometry nodes that you can apply on your own projects. Now, don't forget to go check out cgcookie.com and check out Jonathan Lampel's symbol course where you can go even deeper into these ideas to make a really cool procedural theme park with the roller coaster that you can edit and everything. It's very awesome. Go check it out. Thanks so much for watching and we will catch you in the next one. Until then, I'll catch you later.